Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. Hi there, today we're going to be looking at half equations, which are a famously difficult part of the chemistry course. Uh, they crop up the whole way uh, through the course in various different topics. Um, so what I'm going to do now <coughs> is kind of show you what they are, where they come from, and how you can work them out. So let's start with a really simple process. And again, just as a disclaimer throughout all of these videos, um, a lot of what I do here is a simplification. And, and in a sense, the whole of GCSE science is a simplification. It does get a lot more complicated. Um, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make things um, simple so that you can understand them better. So let's take a, a straightforward example of a metal atom turning into an ion. So let's say I started with a lithium atom. Now, when you look at your periodic table, you'll see that lithium has an atomic number of three, which means that it has three electrons. Now, you're always taught that atoms like to have a full outer shell uh, of electrons. It makes them more stable. As before, it is a bit more complicated than that, but for GCSE, that is sufficient. So essentially, this lithium loses one electron and it becomes an ion that looks like this and it has a positive charge because it loses an electron electrons have a negative charge so if you lose a negative it's like you're gaining a positive uh, and when I do videos on uh, structure and bonding and specifically on ions then that will become a bit more clear as well if you're not sure but the real question here is, where does that electron go? Where is it? So when you study ionic bonding, you see that that electron can be transferred to another atom, and that's fine. But if I'm just thinking about lithium, I'm not thinking about anything else at the moment, where is that electron? Well, what I could do is I could just draw it separate like that. It's two separate things. I've got the ion and I've got the electron that I've lost. I could even a plus there and a cross there to symbolize that this is the electron that I've got. I've got the ion and I've got the electron. Now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to do it with a, another atom called beryllium and beryllium has four electrons in its outer shell and instead of drawing its electrons as crosses I'm going to write them in as a little e minus like that. And the reason why I'm going to use them as E minus and not crosses is just because it's a nice way to symbolize what they are. And E minus means an electron. E minus is an electron. That's what it is. They have negative charge. E is electron. Great. So it has one, two in its first shell. And it also has one, two in its second shell. Fine. So far, so good. Beryllium, it's got four electrons. I'm just drawing them as E minuses instead of crosses. Same thing though. Now, when this one turns into an ion, it loses two electrons. So I now have Be, it's got its two inner shell electrons, and it's now got a charge of two plus. It's lost two electrons, each of those electrons is a minus. If I've lost them both, then I have two plus. And I've also got these e minuses they're now separate from this atom or from the ion really so it's the atom to start with it loses the two electrons this one this one it's now an ion and it's got those 
e minus is separate. Now what chemists like to do is we don't really want to draw this out every time. It's a bit tiresome. So what I'll do instead is I'll just simplify, well not simplify, but I'll summarize it as BE forming BE2 plus and 2 E minus. Why have I got two of them? One, two. So I've got the BE forms a BE2 plus and two E minuses. Now that's really, really clear. That's super obvious where this comes from. You start as your atom of beryllium, you lose two electrons, you become BE2 plus, and there are your two E minuses. But what I've just done is construct what's known as a half equation. The reason why it's called a half equation is because it's really only half of what's happening. Because I said to you, do you remember, I said to you a, a couple of minutes ago that where's this electron gone? It's probably gone to a different atom somewhere. So that's the other half of this equation. But if I only want to focus on the beryllium, this is what I get. I get a half equation that has the beryllium turning into the beryllium ion and those two electrons being lost. I could do exactly the same thing for my lithium example over here. Li. Li plus add E minus. And I'm not going to write it as X because the way that chemists write it is as E minus. But either way, it doesn't really matter. It's just a symbol that we use for an electron. So here we're using X's to symbolize electrons. Here we're using E minus to symbolize electrons. It really means the same thing. And that is also a half equation. What I'd like you to do is have a go for yourself doing that for magnesium. So first, draw the atom. That will go there. Then you do the ion over here. And I want to see the electrons over there. So draw your atom here. You're going to have your arrow. You're going to have an ion over here. And you're going to have your electrons over there. Do that for yourselves. Pause the tape. And then when you're ready, press play again. So we know that magnesium has one, two electrons in the first shell. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in the second shell. And one, two in the final shell. When it becomes an ion, I'll have Mg like this. Still got the two in the first shell. Still got the eight in the second shell. It's going to have a charge of two plus. And I've lost two electrons. If you got that right, well done. And what I'd like you to do now is write for me a half equation for that process. Pause the video. So your half equation here will be Mg forming Mg2 plus add 2e minus. And there you have just constructed a half equation for yourself. What I'd like you to do next, one more example to try before you just do some free practice. Have a go at doing that for me, but for Al, aluminium. Now, if you're feeling comfortable and confident, you can jump straight to the half equation. If you're not sure about how to do that, draw the full atom, draw the full ion, draw the electrons, and then write out the half equation. Pause the video, and when you're ready, press play. So aluminium, we know, has three electrons in the outer shell. It's in group three. It's got three electrons in the outer shell. It's got an atomic number of 13, which means that it will form Al3+. If it forms Al3+, it has lost three E minuses. Now, if you tried to do the half equation straight off the bat and you didn't get that right, then probably what you want to do is maybe have a go at drawing out the atom in full as we've done before. So Al will have two, then eight 
and then 3. And then when it turns into an ion, it will be Al, two electrons here, eight electrons here, a charge of 3, sorry, charge of 3 plus, and I'll have one, two, three spare electrons. All right, you're now ready to do some practice questions. Um, so I've got these ones here for you. As ever, pause the video, do the questions, then check the answers. If you don't actually do them, there's just no point in you doing this video at all. Um, the, they get a bit more tricky as you go down, but only because you won't be able to draw the full atoms like we did when I was explaining it because you don't know how to draw atoms after um, calcium. So after the 20th atom, things tend to get a bit more complicated. But all you need to do is you just look at the group that is in and that group tells you what charge that that ion will take. So have a go at those. And then when you're ready, press play again. Here are your answers. If you've got all those done, Correct, fantastic, well done. You can move on to the next section. If you didn't, then I suggest you go back to the drawing board and either, so for the first one, two, three, four, make sure you draw out the full atom or for the last four, just pay very careful attention to the group that it's in and to the charge that it's going to have. And that will tell you how many electrons are going to be lost. All right, the next bit is slightly more complicated because it deals with the formation of negative ions. And in general, we're talking about non-metals here. Now, the reason why this is a bit more complicated is because those non-metals generally don't exist as single atoms. So if you take something like fluorine gas, fluorine gas doesn't exist as F, it exists as F2. And if I were to draw that, and I'm just going to draw the outer shell here, I'd have to have two fluorine atoms bonded together covalently like this. Now, when those two react with something else and form ions, the ions, the atoms split up, so that covalent bond no longer exists, and then I have two, the two of them separate, but they've gained some kind of electron from somewhere else. From where? Ah, from a metal, whatever, from the other side of the half equation, doesn't really matter. At this point, that's what they've lost. No, sorry, that's what they've gained. They've just gained an electron from somewhere else. They have a charge, minus, minus. Now, if the electrons came from somewhere else, I have to include them over here, in the same way that I did last time. I've got to put those two into my picture somehow which means I can then write the equation as F2 plus two E minuses, two, because there's two of them, forming two F minus. And that there is how you do it for fluorine. Let's try another example. We'll try for O2. What I'd like you to do is have a go at trying to write a half equation for O2 by yourself pause the video and then when you're ready press play again so O2 if I were to draw out as a half equation I'm going to be forming oxygen with the two minus charge that's because it's in group six it's got six electrons in the outer shell it gains two electrons when it reacts so it's gonna have a two negative charge over there and I'm gonna have two of them because in O2 I've got two oxygen atoms so I need to have two oxygen ions over here how many electrons has it gained well each atom has gained two electrons. I'll repeat that. Each at sorry, each oxygen atom from here has gained two electrons to make two oxygen ions or two oxide ions. Which means in total, that's four E minuses. If you got that and you got that correct, well done. You can just move on to the practice set. If you didn't, I'll draw that out slowly so you can see what I'm talking about. You have your oxygen. which has got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. You've got another oxygen that it bonds with, which has also got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Now, when those form ions, you get an O with one, two, three, four, 
if I have six electrons I had before and two from somewhere else and a two minus charge and you get another one over here which is exactly the same two electrons from somewhere else and a two minus charge which means in total over here I've had one two three four electrons gained right um, as soon as you're ready pause the video as per usual uh, towards the bottom there so the fourth fifth and sixth questions those go in the other direction <coughs> um, to what we've seen so far uh, and instead of going from atoms to ions they go from ions to atoms it's exactly the same as before just in the opposite direction uh, so don't stress out about them just think really carefully uh, look at the question try and write down as much as you know already draw the diagrams if you need to and it'll be very very clear the H2 example there is a bit of a curveball as well. Remember that H2, when it turns into ions, turns into positive ions, not negative ones, despite having started as a covalent molecule. So you might have a bit of fun with that one. And as soon as you're ready, turn over for the answers. That, and if you've got them correct, well done. Um, you now know how to construct half equations, which is a vital skill across the chemistry course. A reminder to subscribe and let me know if there's any particular topic you want me to cover. In fact, I did this topic because somebody in the comments asked me to cover it. So please just do let me know.